Good morning. Oh, man. So the first thing I see on the news this morning is this. I think this story is a couple days old. I'm going to turn it up. Hopefully my microphone problems will be solved and you won't hear me talking. I'm sorry there's no light in the room right now. It's still kind of dark outside. It's still only 6 something in the morning. I mean 7 something in the morning. Here you go. Apple's live pictures for you. Uh, right there. Beautiful, beautiful shots. Off CNN. Meanwhile, a day trip for day Listen campers up. ends in tears and accusations of racism. The outing to a pool that's raised questions and debate. Of course. We Americans are trusting by nature. I ran into a darn cone commercial. Let me fast forward you past this commercial. That's the essence of TiVo, you guys. Well, what happened was apparently there was a bunch of kids, uh, day school or day camp, went to um, a swimming pool. And um, a couple of people in the thing saw a bunch of little black kids getting in the pool. Pretty much got outraged at their black kids uh, getting in the swimming pool. And, um, you know, the story develops from there. You're a little kid. No, I'm sorry, this shit. Be careful. You're a little kid, and you're not trying to go out like that. I mean, it's pretty sad and pitiful that you know, a bunch of kids get in the water, and all of a sudden, a bunch of people want these kids out of the water. It's um, it's sad and pitiful that in this day and age, that racism is so regular. You know, racism didn't go away, it just got acceptable. Racism is regular. And Starting Monday, live on CNN and C Where in the heck is this Dory? But, two minutes into it, I thought I had it queued up. And... First. Okay, here you go. Sorry for the wait. Two minutes, I made you wait a long time. So, uh, like I was saying, in this day and age, it is pitiful. This will probably be the last race story I do. As soon as I finish this other guy off that I started yesterday. Um, it's pitiful. It's 2010, people. Come on. Samsung. All they wanted to do was go for a swim. Instead, they were banned from the pool. Now the head of Pennsylvania's Human Relations Commission says he's going to investigate what happened at that swim club in suburban Philadelphia. CNN's Susie Candiotti has the story. Swimming once a week at the spacious Huntington Valley Club near Philadelphia. It sounded ideal for 65 kids described as black and Hispanic at Creative Steps Daycare Summer Camp. I was excited. The parents and children were excited. But when the youngsters showed up at the pool June 29th, after the day camp signed and paid a $1,900 contract, this happened. The children came running down the hill saying, Miss Wright, Miss Wright, those people up there are saying, what are those black kids doing in the pool? 12-year-old Marcus Allen is her son, says he was sitting outside the pool and heard white adults say this. And he was like, oh, why are these um, black kids here? I, and then they were saying, oh, I'm afraid they might do something to my children because I don't know if they might steal, might try to steal some of my stuff or might try to like harm my children. And I, like, I was like amazed that they would think something like this because we're like just like you. Like, we're just like your kids. Not enough for us. Mrs. Wright says the swim club's director told her he was embarrassed, held an emergency board meeting, and called her back the next day to say they could not come back. And he said the membership said, let the chips fall where they may. You know, Marcus, I see tears coming down your face. Why does this make you cry? Because it's just kind of, like, sad that, um, like, people were still thinking like, thinking like this when I felt like these days was over. This is 2009. Children should not be subjected to that. The swim club's director is quoted by local media saying the day camp kids changed the, quote, atmosphere and complexion of the club. A club member reacted. I'll be asking for the president of the club's resignation today. 
because uh, I think the comment that he made, although taken out of context, was probably one of the stupidest comments I ever heard. He claims the club was simply overcrowded, not racist. He said two other unidentified day camps, both non-minority, also got the boot. Senator Arlen Specter put the club on notice in a letter, quote, Without getting into all the legal issues, it is my suggestion that you promptly reinstate the contract and welcome Mrs. Alethea Wright's group back to the pool. Whether they accept is up to them. The club issued a response denying race had anything to do with their decision. Quote, we underestimated the capacity of our facilities. Our Valley Club deplores discrimination in any form. Susan Candiotti, CNN Huntington Valley, Pennsylvania. And on our blog... That is pretty exciting to me. It's because not only did this really happen in 2010, I'm not going to say 2009. 2009 is dead and gone. We're past that. We're, we're, we're over the hump. You know what I mean? There's 12, 12 months in a year and we already on seven. So we're halfway done with 09. So listen, you're a little kid and you face racism. I'm 40 years old and I still face racism. My ancestors faced the horrible, uh, what's the word? Almost iconic, icon, iconic twists of racism. Uh, the black women were raped as they watched their men be castrated. World, the world, the world watched as my people were hung, drugged, and slung through the winds and dogs placed upon them with the water hose ripping the flesh right off their backs. But nothing has changed. Not a damn thing has changed. And the only thing that defeats racism and kills the evil beast of racism is racist people breaking the chain. I don't give a damn about a bunch of kids doing this. I don't give a damn about a bunch of kids doing that. As long as you don't do it to me. I can understand how a group of people could be chilling, relaxing, and a bunch of loud-ass kids come in, and you don't know them. When you don't know a group of people, you're more likely to say, well, I think they might do something. I remember as a child, I had just started going to house parties, and I lived in the projects, and I heard a parent say, he's from the projects. Half the other black kids were from the projects, too, but I was from the projects. I was poor. You can see I was poor. I had the fucked up clothes on. I was a poor kid from the projects and those people were scared to death as if I was going to steal something. But it shouldn't be like that. I try to get a job nowadays. I got white people looking at me funny or white people not telling the truth when I go to work. And it's pitiful. This is another reason why I don't have a job. I cannot deal with white people anymore like that. Because when I see hate coming, I just like shut their asses down instantly. And then I am the one who has the attitude. See, it is pitiful to walk through life knowing that you have to change and conform around other people because one of these people might pick up the phone and call the police and say they think that you might. And that fear coming from a white person is enough for the police to come down, come down hard until they find out who you are. A lot of people say a lot of things about a lot of other people and that's because of fear, because you don't know nobody. I know all different kinds of people, all men, all women, all people. And I feel, when I walk in a room and I feel drama, I feel racism crawling up my neck. I feel the hard stares and, and the whispering. I've seen it. I've lived through it. And I'm going to tell you. It has been going on too long. Stand up and let them see you. They'll figure out who you are after your personality shines through. You've been too 